Hello, attorney Prashanti. Hello. I had my I-797 approved and worked for an employer for around a year. Then my first consultancy transferred my H-1B to its sister consultancy, and which was denied. The initial H-1B is in revoked status. And the second H-1B is denied. I recently got an offer from a reputed company, and they're ready to sponsor my H-1B visa transfer. What are my chances of getting the approval? Well, if the H-1B um, is already denied and you are in the country, then you should leave the country because you are no longer in status. And therefore, you will not be able to file a change of status or a transfer, um, anything um, that will grant you an extension of your I-94, whether in this status or a different status. So what you should do is leave the country as soon as you can and then apply for the H-1 and then come back in on the new H-1 once it gets approved. Since you're saying it's um, a good company, most probably if it's done properly, the H-1B most likely will get approved. And and what is the reason based on this question, uh, what could be a possible, uh, generally based on your experience, why would somebody transfer their H-1 to a sister consultancy? Looks like this is a staffing form and a consulting form and it's a contractual model, you know, I think for the uh, beneficiary. Now, what could be a possible reason for this uh, transferring out from one company to another, uh, you know, because, you know, with the new H-1B modernization program, there has been a lot of fraud and abuse. Do you see any connection for doing so? I mean, yes, Dan. I mean, we don't want to speculate about the viability of that company. Uh, might be perfectly innocent and, you know, but it's possible in many instances that uh, in a situation where a company maybe has an audit or a, uh, has, uh, you know, USCIS audit or DOL audit or, you know, that has some kind of trouble with their company or doesn't want to, for some reason, operate that company in its present status, would then transfer all their employees to a sister company so that they don't lose, you know, the employees are their asset. So, so that they don't lose their assets, they're obviously trying to transfer their assets to uh, you know, a different company so that they can continue to operate their business. Um, so, but the fact that it was denied, uh, that could again possibly be the reason because of the connection between the two companies. But again, it's all speculation. So, okay. that's not to speculate. No, because I was, you know, when I was reading the, uh, um, the publication by the USCIS, you know, with the H-1B modernization program, they have clearly given a chart where, you know, last fiscal year, 2023, one beneficiary had, you know, this, there's no connection, but I just wanted to have this, uh, you know, a little discussion on this. Uh, 83 H-1Bs were filed. Is this practical? Uh, one person can get 83 jobs. This yeah, is, that is highly improbable that, uh, so there are two things to this. While a H-1B beneficiary can file multiple registrations. They can. Uh, they have to show that each one of those, on, behind each one of those registrations, there was a valid job offer. People forget about the valid job offer part. And then they question the USCIS when they send out RFEs or don't grant visas um, because they um, rightly so think that, you know, a H-1B can file a beneficiary can file multiple registrations, but they're forgetting the other part of it, which basically states that the registration has to be for a valid job offer. And it's not conceivable or probable for uh, one person to have 75 job offers. So USCIS is going to look at it uh, with a critical view and most probably come to the conclusion that uh, the job offers were not bona fide. Okay. Uh, anyway, we should do a longer session on the new process, uh, but uh, thank you for answering that question. You're welcome.